Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. I've noticed that there's been a couple new updates to Xtool Creative Space over the last few months, and the most recent tutorial that I made is not up to date. So I figured I'd come on here and make a new tutorial to show all the new things that Xtool Creative Space has made to make its product even better. I'm going to try to go pretty in depth on this tutorial, but really hit on the items that I've seen comments about in the comment section over the last couple of videos. So here's the Xtool homepage. As you can see, it's very visually pleasing. It has a little bit of a new look than what it did the last video, as it's got some new ideas and engravings that you can make yourself. So to start a new project, you come up here to the top where it says plus new project. And then this brings you to a blank document. Starting from the left side over, I'm going to insert an image. So click the image tab, find your image, and insert it. So here's an outline of a fish. I can make this image bigger or smaller. I can rotate the image. And then see here on the top bar, there's X and the Y axis is its location based off of the spreadsheet. So if I move it, you see the X and the Y axis changes. You can also change the width and the height of the image using this top taskbar. So let's say I need the image to be 6 inches wide. So I type a 6 and then click off of it. And now it's 6 inches wide. And this little link button right here locks the aspect ratio. So if you change the width, it'll change the height as well. So if I unclick that and then change it that I want 6 inches high, it'll make it a square and change the width and the height based on what I put in the aspect ratio. So anytime that I make an edit like that and I don't like it, I can come up here to the top to the undo button and undo it like I had it. You can undo or redo. Going over further on this task bar, you can also rotate the image based off a of degree. So if I wanted to rotate it 60 degrees, I would just type it in. Moving over, we've got an arrange. So this arranges it on the page. You can either bring it to the front or bring it to the back of different images. You can align the image on the page. And then you can invert the image so you could reflect it horizontally or vertically. Now to some of the cool tools that Xtool Creative Space lets you use. So using the edit button, I can use this magic wand to remove the white space around the image. I try to do this on every image that I can, so it turns this PNG into a transparent PNG, and then just hit save. I can also use the eraser, and if I needed to remove something, I can remove it easily. Moving over, I can trace along the image. So if I wanted to cut this image, I can do a trace around it, hit save, now you see I have two different images. This top image, I can engrave. The bottom image, I can score, engrave, or cut. This would be great if you were making like a Christmas ornament and you want an image that's engraved and then another image that's cut out over top of it. I use this tool quite a bit. Next up is a filter. And this is usually used uh, for pictures where you can change the look of the picture unless you just want to make something darker. Under the adjust tab you can adjust the look of the image either make it brighter or darker or change the contrast a little bit and again that's usually used when you have pictures of people or animals that you would want to engrave. There's a crop function where you can change the look of the image or make a crop ratio based off of what your engraving needs. And then one of my favorite tools is an outline tool. So you can see it's outlined inside and outside of the image. I sometimes like to use this and remove the inner outline. Hit confirm. As you can see, it's got an outline around the outside of the image. So a lot of times I will engrave the image and then do an outline outside, let's say to make earrings or something like that. Moving on down the taskbar here to the left, we have a text box. 
So you can see I've got the text icon on my mouse. Just click it and then type what you want. Then I can score, engrave, or cut this text. I can also change the font, the size, and then center it on the page, just like I could on a Microsoft Word document. Further on down the line are some different shapes, lines, rectangles, or circles. You just click which one you want and make that image. Pretty simple. Next up is a vector. Here you can make your own lines and if you hold down on it, you can make concave lines. Then you can connect all these together and there's you an image. I've never used the vector very much. I haven't really had a need for it. But I think it would be nice if you had some sort of image that you just needed uh, one extra line for to connect it to be sure to enclose the engraving. Up next is a list of multiple different shapes that you can use. I use this quite a bit, uh, making earrings and coasters to sell on Etsy. Some of the pre-made images that they have are really good to engrave because you know that they're dark and that they're going to engrave really well. Also each one of these images you can engrave, score, and cut. It's worth checking out some of the images that they have to see if this is something that you might be able to use without having to find that image or shape on another website. Okay, now I've brought back this picture of a fish to show you the final few tools on this left taskbar. So under the Applications tab, I can make some different arrays from this. A grid array, so I can make multiple grids of this image and change the spacing and the columns. I can do a circular array, which is kind of the same thing but in a circle instead of a grid format. This will be good if you're creating some type of circular engraving and you want to have images around the outside of the circle. Here's a test array. This is something that's pretty new and very neat. It's got all these images here with different speeds and powers. So you can test what speed and power looks good for each engraving. So you can see it has some at 400 millimeters per second and 10% power all the way over to 400 millimeters per second for 100% power. So one's going to be very light, this one here on the bottom, and one's going to be very dark, this one here on the top. And you can find which one looks the best. This is a great way to test before you make a big engraving or something that you have a lot of money in. You can figure out exactly which speed and power percentage works best for your type of material. Up next is the Design to Find tool. You can come on here and find some different designs that other XTool Creative Space creators have made. And you can buy these designs. And I believe there's some free ones as well. You can come over here on the left sidebar and what material you'd like to use, what skill level you have, and so forth. This is just a cool way to find some already pre-made templates that you can use and make a great final product. Exit out of that, and then the final item on this left taskbar is another one that's relatively new, is AI. So I can use this AI, let's say I want to create a logo, I can click on logo, I can write a description of what I want it to have, I can display some text, then I change the text style, the aspect ratio, and how many I would like. Let's say I, I don't want the logo, I can come here and there's a bunch of different options of different image types that I can use, such as hand-drawn, cut-out logo, there's colorful prints, blade cutting, so on and so forth. So a bunch of different ways that you can use AI to make a really neat image. Because there's some things that you just can't find online. And if you have more questions about AI for Xtool, I have a video about that that I put in the description. Going on further down the left sidebar are just some select tools. This tool helps you select the image. If I want to change it to the grabber tool, I can move around the grid array. So if I use the grabber tool or the hand tool, I cannot select my image. I'll have to go back to the select tool. This is good if you have your image zoomed in quite a bit. I can also do layering and make different layers visible and invisible and lock different layers. As you can see I only have one image here so only one layer. 
If I had another layer, I could name the layers and put one on top of the other. Now up here on this top bar, this X tool logo here on the top, I can come and file and export and save all my documents. I can edit, copy, paste, undo and redo. I can use the help feature, help from Xtool Creative Space Guides, and then I can go on the setting feature. In settings, I can change the units from millimeters to inches. I can change the language of Xtool Creative Space. I can add auto snapping, which snaps the image either to the center or to the middle of another image. This is really nice when you want to make sure that your images are level and up and down. I can use a precise vector path and I can display a vector fill. I can use hotkeys, that's something I don't usually use, and I can change the vector quality. And I can come over and do some file settings. I normally don't mess with this very much, but it would be just be something you would have to play around with if that's something you're interested in. I usually don't mess with the developer mode either. Uh, since I've downloaded Xtool Creative Space, I hadn't had any problems with my software. So I want to keep it that way, so I try not to mess with it too much. If you have any questions about anything like that, you can go on Xtool Creative Space website and find some great ideas on how to troubleshoot whatever problem you're having. Then down here at the bottom about Xtool Creative Space, you can check for an update, and it's good to do every few weeks. As you can see, I'm up to date. Continuing to go over on the top taskbar, I can quick save my document using this Save button or Control S. Again, I can undo or redo what I've just done on my canvas. Then I can create some different canvases. So let's say I had four or five different images that I'm wanting to create. I can create another canvas and they'll all be here side by side. One thing I like to do whenever I make coasters, if there's going to be a set of four different coasters and they have four different images on them, I'll put four different canvases and each image on each canvas. That way whenever I save it, and then go back, I can have all four images right there and I don't have to have it as four different file folders in my document files. Next up here on the top is the processing mode so I can process on a flat surface. I can use a roller, that would be for mugs or tumblers. I can use the chuck, that could also be used for mugs and tumblers or Christmas ornaments or anything like that. The chuck tool is a very neat tool and I would recommend the RA2 if you don't have it. You can use the slide extension, which is a lengthener for an Xtool device. And then you can also use screen preparation, which I've never used very much, so I can't say a whole lot about it. Continuing to go over the top of the taskbar, here at this caret key, you can check for updates, go to settings, or quit your document. You can find any notifications that you may have using this little bell icon. You can look at your processing history and what's in progress using this little button on the top that looks like three stacked pages. You can also give Xtool an idea of what type of material you're wanting to use using this user defined materials button. Click on it and there are many different materials here that Xtool already has a designated speed and power made for each one. So let's say I'm going to use three millimeter basswood. I can click on it, click confirm, and now whenever I have my engraving, it knows that I should have a power of around 80% and a speed of 150 millimeters per second and one pass. And that will give me a decent engraving on the basswood. But you need to try it out for yourself and see what works best for you because every engraver is different. So now some different engraving tools. So I select my image and I can come down change the speed and the power percentage of the engraving. The power here is at 80 and the speed would be at 150 millimeters per second. Uh, that would give you a pretty dark engraving, but it would get done pretty quickly because it has such high speed and power. It's also only one pass. Usually I use grayscale, but there are a couple different other bitmap modes. Change the lines per centimeter. That's something that I don't really use very much. I can also change the type of engraving mode. I can look at an Xtool engraver user guide. 
I can look at my device settings, which is very important. You can connect using USB, Wi-Fi, IP, or Ethernet. I, I usually use USB because it's the most user-friendly for me because I can have my computer right there with me. Uh, I use an Xtool D1 Pro. If the D1 Pro was connected, it would say Xtool D1 Pro right here, and I would click Connect. It's very easy to connect your engraver. I can also switch or connect the device. So here's my Xtool D1 Pro, Xtool D1 Pro. And as you can see, it is not connected. If I had my USB port plugged in and I did not see it over here on the device settings, I can click on this one and then click connect. And that should connect my Xtool to Xtool Creative Space. Final few processing things here before I end the video. To frame, you just click on the framing and connect your device. You can change the speed of the frame. I don't know why it starts it out so fast because it, it frames it so fast you can't hardly see what it's doing. So I like to slow it down as slow as possible so it goes up and down very slowly so I can see what my engraving image is framed upon so I can ensure that it fits inside my piece of material. I just cl click frame and if my engraver was connected I could frame the item very easily. Then also with process One thing I always like to do is change the point of origin. So if I'm starting at the top left of my piece of material, this is where I would need the dot at. But let's say I'm starting at the middle, I would need to change that. It gives you an estimated total processing time. You can change the module trajectory and then change the speed over here as well. And here you can make the image bigger or smaller. And then you can restore it how you had it before. Again, up here at the top, you can frame and change the framing settings. You hit the start button and then hit the big circular button on your engraver to start your engraving. So that's just a quick overview of all the new updates of Xtool Creative Space. Some of it you've seen before and some of it's very simple. But when you're first starting out, it's good to just have a quick guide to learn how to do an engraving. It's great to just play around with this a little bit and figure out what works best for you and what doesn't. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment section and read the description below to find some great links to buy Xtools and Xtool material. If you would, please give me a like and a follow if you enjoyed the video and found some benefit. And visit my page for some other tutorials and great informational videos on Xtool engraving and Xtool creative space. So thanks for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.